Press Schoolie episode 28. Hey, this looks a little different than last time we saw it, huh? Thanks to everyone who voted on the uh, the logo. As you see, it's staying yellow at this point. And um, Allison did worked her magic and put the, a nice border around the edges of the uh, of the logo. Looks like it belongs there. And I do really like the fact that it just plays, pays homage to the uh, heritage of the bus. So there it is. Thank you again for everyone who commented. So this time, we're gonna give you a little bit more detail of what we're doing. Since we've got the outside pretty looking nice, um, it's time to uh, show you how we build our cabinets and how we build our cabinet frames using Craig pocket screws. Come along. Okay, so we showed you a bit how we built the doors before, but I thought I'd give you kind of a little bit of a go by go with them since I have to build this door. So um, what I wanna do is I want my door to line up exactly with this uh, width of the, uh, of the drawer. And then I will um, leave enough room for an eighth of an inch reveal at the bottom and an eighth of an inch gap in between here. So to measure, you get this. 13 and 3 quarters by 24 and an eighth. And then I'll take a quarter off of that, so it's 23 and 7 eighths. If you look the way this is built, that my uh, my top rail and my bottom rail um, go through um, all the way from edge to edge. So that's the the width of those uh, those pieces. And um, the, the styles will sandwich in between. And uh, we'll use pocket screws to do that. So. So, got measurements, time to go cut and uh, get to work there. When I was doing all the other doors, I had ready access to a uh, one by two poplar. Went to Home Depot today, and you know, stupid COVID being what it is, uh, you just never know what's gonna be out of stock. So, uh, the one by two poplar was not, uh, not available. So, I did the next best thing, I got uh, one by six poplar and I'm gonna rip it down to our uh, to our dimension that we need the thing is Just because I'm me. I just never really trust the factory edge on a uh, on a piece of wood I want to make sure that it's nice and straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip off just a little teeny bit um, On this side to get a nice saw edge on it and Then I'll set my width and I'll use that for my uh, for my edge that goes against the uh, against the fence to get a nice straight cut. I actually set it up here like this. I've got my saw blade up just barely above the wood. That's what my dad always taught me. Don't let uh, too much out there. I push my fence up against here. Take our piece of wood out. Move it over just a tap. Close it, and off we cut it. Now that I've gotten that nice factory edge, I'll turn it around. I'll use that as the edge that I use for uh, for uh, for ripping. What I'll use now is this piece that um, is the same size as the rails and styles of everything else, and I'll use that to set my fence. There, slide the saw in till it just touches. Open it up, tighten it down, and there we go. Now to saw some more wood. All right, so that should be plenty uh, of wood. Those, those two five foot pieces should be plenty for all that I needed to do. I'm actually gonna be able to reuse these since these are less than um, 13 and three quarters. I've got two of those. So I'll use those for the, um, the top and bottom, the, the rails uh, of, the, of the panels. So I need to cut those off at 13 and three quarters and here we go. There's two at 13 and three quarters. Um, now we need to do the styles, which are the, the, the total distance from the bottom to the bottom of the drawer was a 24 and an eighth. Uh, we want to take off um, a quarter inch for that. So that would be uh, 23 and 7 eighths. It needs to be 23 and 7 eighths minus the width of these because these are going to go on the top and bottom. So, of course, I can't make it easy. It is uh, 2 and 15 sixteenths. So, so quick math. <laughs> I ended up, I need 20 and 15 sixteenths on two of those rails. 20 and 15 sixteenths. Off we go. The gut check. So this is supposed to be 13 and 3 quarters by 23 and 7 eighths. 13 and 3 quarters. 23 and 7 eighths. Bingo. What's gonna happen here is 
this piece on the back will get uh, pocket screws to hold this together. So this piece gets um, uh, the channel groove all the way through and so does that one. This should only have the groove come a half, a, a half an inch in past where this ends up. What I do is I mark this, first of all, this face. 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 That way we know this is the way this is going to go together. So then what I will do is I will come down here and I will mark there on all four corners. This, that is close enough anyhow to where my edge is. I'll fix that, make that right. Right there. So I'll do that on all four corners. Now, on these, I know when I put it on my router table um, exactly how far to make the groove go. There's where the, the corner goes. I'm going to route the groove out to that corner. That gives me some meat to be able to screw into, uh, but yet still have a groove that I can put my panel onto. So, here we go. So, these two long ones will get... These two will have the groove go all the way through. Those two will stop at the line. So, the reason I marked the face of each one of them is because I want to make sure that F is faced out each time. So in here, you see we've got a quarter inch straight bit. So these, I'm gonna do face with the F up. So these will actually route straight through from beginning to end um, on both of those pieces. So this piece, you will note as I go through here, uh, these little short pieces, I will actually, I, I, I can't do it with the camera in hand, but I will actually plunge in, run back to that line right there, which is where my bit starts. Then I will run it through all the way, all the way down until I get to where that stops. Then I turn my router off, take it off and do it again. First, the long pieces, F facing upward, they go all the way from beginning to end. Hold your ears, here we go. All right, now again, these shorter pieces We'll plunge in just past here, back up until we line up to this line, run it through until we end up with that line. And there's two of them. Here we go. Hold your ears, noise alert. Second verse, same as the first. Right, so then our quarter inch fill piece needs to be this inside dimension plus a, uh, plus a half an inch because it's gonna be a quarter inch inset in each one of those. So let me measure it and I'll tell you. 21 and a half by 11 and a half. So, here we go. And there, you have the inset for the door. All that's left is pocket hole joinery. The next thing we'll do is the pocket hole joinery and put it together. All right, it got to be the end of the day yesterday, and so had to, as uh, BE Adventure Partners says, take a nap. So, uh, now it's time to put the doors together, and I'll show you 
we're going to be using um, the ubiquitous Craig pocket holes. Take a look. Well, this is the Craig kit that comes together. I will tell you what everybody says. Buy the tool. Yeah, it costs money, but yeah, we used it so much. So this is our Craig drilling guide. And inside the box, drill bit specific for Craig with that little shoulder on the top. And the uh, Craig screw square hole, square drive um, bit. So there's a couple of things to do to set up your Craig jig for the piece of wood that you're working with. Uh, the wood we've got here is three quarter inch, so everything is set on three quarters of an inch. This guide up here at the top moves up and down. You unscrew this thumb latch fairly significantly. Set your guide to three quarters of an inch, and this thumb screw won't go in unless it's actually lined up correctly for three quarters of an inch. So you set that guide. Then down here, you'll notice that there are marks on here should be set for three quarters of an inch and um, it is I like to make mine just a little shallow of, of a three quarter inch line the big important thing with these is that when you drill down through that as you see I've, I've had boo-boos and gone through into, the, into the, uh, the wood you're not supposed to that's not supposed to go out through the wood so if you look at that that actually is a couple uh, millimeters out past there so that then sets up my uh, my guide perfectly for this. All right, it's really important to get the orientation of the wood correct. So you want to make sure that the face is away from the drill side. Um, you want to make sure that the face frame is away because the holes will be drilled back here and that's going to be on the inside of the cabinet that you don't see. So I've already set this depth so it squeezes the wood but doesn't crush it. And face faces away. I line up to make sure that this hole, these, these are the two holes that I'm going to be using to drill. Um, we make sure that, that we don't come out this edge and we also don't go into the groove along this side. So we put that on there like that. Clamp, nice and tight. My, uh, my drill bit is, is slightly, slightly dull. It's time for a new one, but it'll get the job done. Just kind of drill all the way down through until this collar hits the bottom here. And just keep on going. And there you have it. You have eight uh, perfectly drilled pocket holes ready to go. All right, now it's time to put everything together. And it's all done with pocket hole joinery. Again, you notice that these holes, if you look in here, these holes have a little shoulder inside them. And it's designed specifically for these. See how they have a shoulder that goes through them? There's a little uh, self-drilling part um, on the edge here. So as we put these together, we're gonna start down at this corner with our face frame this way. Then Craig makes these wonderful clamps that look like this. They actually squeeze together and this wider circle um, will hold our corners together on the piece of wood that we have. We're gonna apply a little bit of wood glue here. down and it it holds it has a little adjustment too if you want it to get a little tighter you use this little knob right here and adjust it just a touch tighter and make sure everything is lined up all right now my face frame is flat against the surface here of the table pocket screw. Don't go fast because you don't want to rip out through the wood. Here it changed just a little bit. It's tight. Second one in. If you saw it, it just kind of sucked it in nice and square. The 
important thing is that your cuts are square and true. So that's one side. Now, all nice and level there. What we're gonna do is because we have a groove that goes all the way through on this piece of wood and it stops here, we're gonna put the other long side on first and then we'll slide our Now we're ready to slide in our piece, our, uh, our face board. That up. Some people apply glue, some people don't. I am of the glue variety. Just like to, because it's going to be in a bus, just want to make sure that I keep it nice and tight and, uh, and ready to go. Not a lot of glue, just a little bit. There we have our inset put on there. A little glue inside this. And I add one last piece, and that is a, an inset piece that goes in here, um, just to kind of cover over all the imperfections on the on the frame itself, on the inside, and to give it a little bit more sturdiness. That I use, uh, I'll use uh, wood glue, and I'll use uh, brad nails with an air nailer in along the side there to hold that, but I'll spare you those details. So there you have it. It's now ready for Allison to work her magic, and. Uh, uh, prime it and paint it and get it all ready to go and uh, I've got another one to do for inside the bathroom vanity and uh, we'll kind of move on from there and this is what it looks like after Allison's worked her magic she's put uh, primer on here um, and three coats of, uh, of semi-gloss paint um, on the doors and yes color reveal for the inside cabinets they're also blue take a look cabinets installed face frames done um, you look inside here, used uh, Blum mini hinges. Um, those are the ones I think I mentioned that because these styles are so small, 35 millimeter pockets didn't work um, in these. So we uh, ended up using hinges that use 23 millimeter, um, or 23, 26 millimeter pockets. And there you have it. So I wanna thank you for following along on this uh, cabinet build extravaganza. Uh, we're really excited. If, like I said, things are really kind of moving forward. Um, next episode, you'll see us doing some work in the underbelly storage, um, moving forward with gray water. It's really coming along and, uh, you know, we keep trying to put a percentage on, on this as to like what percentage we're done. I don't know. Um, I would say before we were about 60% done. Now, maybe 75, I don't know. But um, it's moving along really, really quickly now. We've got a lot of stuff happening and a lot of stuff moving. So. Um, see you next week, and uh, thanks again for following along on the Harmony Express Schooling. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.